Welcome back to ASEAN Challenge and this is ASEAN Biz where we interview the masterminds, either students, professors or people in the ASEAN business. Let's go listen. Let's go listen. Let's go listen. Welcome back everyone to ASEAN Challenge Talk ASEAN Biz with me ลูกแก้วสีการนาขวิสุทธิ์เป็นช่วงที่เราจะมาพบปะกับผู้เชี่ยวชาญในแวดวงธุรกิจนะคะและพูดคุยเรื่องของความเชื่อมโยงเกี่ยวกับวงการธุรกิจในอาเซียนและประเทศไทยค่ะ And at the moment I'm with Professor Kanoi from the Philippines สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีครับ How are you today I'm fine Can you please introduce yourself a little bit What okay. are you doing right now uh, Thank you I'm actually uh, Leonardo M. Canoy Jr. I'm a doctoral degree holder from the Philippines. Presently, I'm the dean of the College of Commerce in one of the most pontifical Catholic University of Santo Tomas. I've been in the teaching profession for almost 34 years. I also had the chance to teach in Indonesia for almost 11 years, where I had an international student with some of the exchange students. Though my expertise is actually into human resource management, and it's okay. indeed an honor for me to be part of this interview. Well, we're very honored to have you. That's uh, very impressive. Thank you. So, uh, for the you've been in this field of business and instructing about business for, for a very, very long years. thirty-four yeah. years. Can you tell me how you started out? Actually, I started teaching way back in 1984 with the baccalaureate students. Now, I've been into teaching for 34 years, handling both the undergraduate, the graduate with the MBA and the PhD degree holders. So the difference that I can tell you is in the baccalaureate, the undergrad, I actually teach them more on the theories, the, the theories. principles and the concepts. Right. So the execution and the impl implementation, including the cases, happens in the master level. Mm -hmm. Though the actual, business exposure happens in the doctoral level where most of my students were actually managers, presidents, Already. even entrepreneurs or owners of big companies in the Philippines. Wow. And it's really wonder to be uh, with them from being young or too young up to the age you that they're the supposed growth. to be. Yes. yes. Wow. ก็น่าสนใจมากเลยนะคะที่เรากําลังพูดถึงคือท่านก็เป็นอาจารย์อยู่ในแวดวงมา 30-40 ปีแล้วจนตอนนี้ก็เหมือนเป็นเป็นเป็นผู้ใหญ่มากๆที่สอนอยู่ในแวดวงธุรกิจนะคะที่ฟิลิปปินส์แล้วก็เคยสอนที่อินโดนีเซียด้วยแล้วก็พูดถึงการที่ความแตกต่างระหว่างการสอนนักศึกษาปริญญาตรีปริญญาโทแล้วก็จนถึงระดับที่สอนที่มีธุรกิจของตัวเองแล้วค่ะซึ่งเดี๋ยวเราจะมาพูดกันต่อเลยนะคะ so uh, talking about the differences of teaching uh, different levels of business uh, people from the undergraduate level you said you mentioned that it's mainly theories theories principles, principles. concepts because they don't have any background yet of course so that would be the starting point for them to be able to know what is really behind business and then some of the execution or application happens in the master level. Not only that, but they're also exposed into cases. Cases. Yes. And then in the doctoral level, of course, it's more in-depth, where it doesn't only include execution, but it also includes collaboration you know, with these students who are entrepreneurs in their own right. So what, what's the difference between, say, someone like like me, that I might not have been exposed to uh, business theories, I didn't study business in university, and suddenly I just want to have a business. Okay. And just, just to go hands on, and uh, is it possible, okay, that on the side, is it possible for someone that has never had the experience in it's, business, yeah. but to know the theories and be very good about the theories. It's actually possible because there are some who are into business who doesn't learn or didn't learn about the theories and the concept. Yes. But the only difference is it's a bit hard if you just do it your own way rather right. than having a guidance uh, that would lead you and direct you on how really to start up a business. So you don't there's have a, to... There's a difference between doing it your own, own. and then doing business where you actually enter let's say, a classroom or a, 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 
a class discussion to learn about the principles, the concepts, and how these theories are actually applied in reality. Is, would it be like a shortcut? Do you think? Some sort of, yes. Yeah, so the theories and the lessons on business, that might be and about besides, a shortcut. Yes. And besides, if you don't go into schooling, it might be some sort of an impulse on your end or on your part to be right. doing business because uh, you might be at a loss somewhere along the line. Mm. So the, these kind of losses, is that something that is theorized in the lessons in the business schools? Yes. When you go through like you, you lost, you lose your millions, you lose your business, yes. how to handle these things, that is also an important... Yes. Especially in, in school, like, like in my case, my expertise is more on managing people. Uh -huh. So I still believe that the most important and the most critical of all the resources or the capital in running a business is still people. Because people can make or unmake a business yes. where the success and failure of a business would actually be dependent on the people. If you don't know how to manage your people, chances are you might be losing your business. Right. Because they're the one also behind the scene. Yes for the business to be you know, productive, to be uh, more efficient, effective, and for you to be able to have the fruits of your profit. ท่านก็เป็นผู้เชี่ยวชาญในเรื่องของการดูแลทรัพยากรบุคคลนะคะและท่านก็บอกว่าถ้าสมมุติเราไม่สามารถที่จะชักนำดูแลคนที่ทำ
ประสบความสําเร็จไปด้วยกันดังนั้นการสร้างแรงบันดาลใจถ้าเราเป็นผู้ประกอบการนะคะก็เป็นเรื่องที่สําคัญมาก Uh, as a recommendation, how would you say is the best way to motivate? How let's let's get more specific on tips on how to motivate people around you. Maybe one is uh, being the head of the company. You have to lead by example. Lead by you example. You have to be the role models. Mm -hmm. You have to practice what you have been preaching. Mm -hmm. You have to be open. You have to be transparent. And then the communication line should always be open to all. And you must have an open door policy. Provided that your people will not abuse or misuse your power, being, let's say, the owner or the head of the organization. Right. ก็คือเราจะต้อง lead by example นะคะก็คือเราต้องการให้เขาเป็นยังไงเราก็ต้องพยายามที่จะเป็นอย่างนั้น That's a very key point, I think, in leadership, right? And how to do that. And What happens when there's like it hits a wall, a big problem, to deal with that, like in a business? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? You you have a problem with your people. There is a conflict. There's an issue. When there are lots of doubts, so of course leading them with a vision. This is where mm -hmm. we're going to go. That's that's not so difficult. That's an easy part. Yeah. But then when there's lots of challenges and obstacles and trying to unite. Everyone's hopes that this is going to work. This will be successful. When there are so many, like you know, there will be lots of people who don't believe that it can happen. Yeah, that's why you have to get people that would have to live up your vision, your mission, and at the same time would be able to fit in to your organization's culture. Because if they cannot fit in, that would be a problem to the management or simply the owner of the business. That's why you have to be selective in getting the people. Who would be within your boat in running the business, per mission and vision of your company, in a way that they will be able to practice the way you want your business to be. And I'm talking of the organizational culture. So that's one way. And another thing is, people are people because people can change, people can be formed, people can be disbanded. So what is important is you deal with people. In a different style, depending on a given situation, because whether we like it or not, people would go into conflict. There would be issues. There would be miscommunication. Yes. There would be misunderstanding. Yes. But the way to deal with them, there are different styles or strategies that you can actually use. Just to name some, maybe you you can go into avoidance where both parties were not prepared yet, or maybe you can go into competition, or you go into uh, accommodation style. So it's a one-way style, or you go by compromise, where compromise I bend, you team. bend, yeah, with your team. Though in a compromise style, you have to meet halfway. Right. But the best way and the win-win solution is known as the collaboration. The collaboration. Where everything will have to be, you know, laid down, okay. and then you try to you... come up with your pros and cons, and then try to yes. weigh down what would be the, what would be more beneficial, yes. and what would be not. So it's a question of benefit and cost analysis. See the things that you have on the table. Your good yes. uh, advantages, disadvantages, yes. their advantages, disadvantages, and what they can bring to the table. Yes, and then try to weigh down which is uh, which among these two would have more or would have less, and from there you have to work it out. I see. And um, just skipping back to the questions about uh, the the undergraduate levels we were talking before, I want to know like the, you. Usually, professors that teach business, do you, would you teach from experience or in my case, yeah, I know, I get your theories, point. Theories, yes. It's a combination mm -hmm. of what I have been into and what the theory is actually all about. Right. So, whenever I teach in the undergraduate, I always start it with the theories and the principles, and then after which, I share with them what is it that I did experience. Let's say mm -hmm. being in an administrator yes. and being a former banker. Because uh -huh. before I moved into teaching, I was formerly working in a bank I for see. almost five years. Okay. And then things that I learned from the past and things that I learned in my administration right now are things that I also shared with my students. Other than things that I heard from my friends and colleagues who are actually in the industry. The industry. Because in my present college, we have a combination of practitioners, yes. industry practitioners, and academicians. So, so we combine. I see. So it's combined between theory and experience. But in that case, if it's 
if it's if you go talk to another different businessman, they will give one sort of example. If you talk to another, they've been through different problems. So therefore, the advice and teachings from every businessman would be very different. Mm -hmm. Would would they necessarily clash and go against theories usually? It depends on what the problem is, and it depends on what theory principle you're supposed to suggest or apply to them. Though some would, would make use of a theory or a principle, but in execution, they actually come up with their own. Their own. They try to revise or they try to devise the principle or a theory in a way that it will fit the culture and the practices of that company. So in, in the... In the uh, general idea of business, there's no really right and wrong. Yes. Exactly. You can just try and it works. So it's just a trial, uh, trial and error. So therefore, the, the theories that you learn about, these are, are they derived from like general cases of most businesses or? Some are, gen are derived from general cases, but some were actually theorized by the previous gurus or the mm -hmm. so-called pioneers in the field of management, marketing, finance, and human resources down the line. And these were used actually just as a guide. It doesn't mean that you have to go with the theory or the principle. You can simply deviate from the theory, but you can use, make use of it as just a guide. Yeah. But not entirely making use of it 100%, because the use of it, the use of it would also be dependent upon what's the problem of your company. Exactly. So you have to tailor it and fit it and suit it into your company's needs. Yes, for, for example, like if there was someone that, uh, you know, stuck 100% correctly mm -hmm. on the theory, that doesn't mean that they're not able to fail, Correct. right? Correct. And if there's someone that's, uh, they don't know anything about theory, they just do this and that on their yes. way, they can either so also su the succeed it's either as become well. successful or not. Yes. Either of the two. So in terms of business, yeah, as we were talking before, it's a, it's a combination mm -hmm. of experience, situation, theories, how you should and should not. But is there any certain theories and values that you worship in particular that this is the most important in business? The way I look at it, there's no ideal theory or principle that would make the, bus or rather, that would make the business or the organization successful. So from what I have mentioned earlier, it depends on the situation, it depends on the problem, it depends on the nature, it depends on the one who is supposed to come up with a solution to the problem of the business. Mm -hmm. So it's a case-to-case -case basis. Case-to-case -case business, I see. And okay, going back to the human resources part, um, they call it what, what is the, now it's already the term that you human use? Capital. Human capital. Human resource previously was known as personnel. Person. Then from personnel, it was changed to human resource. And to, from human resource, it was now named as human capital. Because they have this uh, wrong notion before that when you talk of capital, you only refer to tangible things mm. like money, Cost machineries, ish. equipment, see, tables yes. down the line. But... Uh, Human or man in nature is part of, of the capital human too. Cap of capital, and they are the intangible part of the human capital. Mm -hmm. And as I have mentioned earlier, they're the one who's supposed to bring success or failure to your organization. Mm -hmm. Because even though you have all the money, you have all the equipment, you have all the machineries, but if you have a dissatisfied, unmotivated personnel or staff or man, nothing will happen to your money, equipment, machineries, and the other resources that you have. So still, you have to deal with the TLC with your people, meaning treat them with the tender, loving care, because they will also be the one to care about your organization. Treat them as part of the organization, uh, leading them to your mission and vision, and living your culture. And in that case, you are assured of being in the right track. Well, thank you very much, Professor Kanoi. It's an uh, honor. It was very, very lovely to have you. And it was really good talk, talking about business and uh, the human capital yes. and everything like that. So, if you want to learn Professor Kanoi, you can use the of the and the 
หรือประสบการณ์จริงในการเอาไปประกอบธุรกิจนะคะก็สามารถที่จะมาพบกันใหม่นะคะสำหรับวันนี้ลาไปก่อนค่ะสวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับ Now that was our interesting interview for ASEAN Biz. We'll go for a short break and come back for ASEAN Challenge. Let's go back for a short break.